Hello everybody and welcome to Lesson 2 in the Ben and Boz Microsoft Excel video tutorial series. I'm Boz. I'm Ben. How you doing today, man? It is a beautiful day and now we're rolling with these things. We are. We got some introductory stuff out of the way in Lesson 1 and now we're going to make these files a little bit more readable and format them a lot nicer. We're going to, in the goals as you can see them there, improve the presentation and readability of these Excel files and then we're going to learn how to do some printing and make it look prettier when we print as well. All right, a little bit more specifically, we're going to teach you how to do bold and italics, how to highlight cells within a line, or all the cells within a line a couple different ways. We're going to teach you how to add some borders and then use the print preview shortcut so you don't have to go the long way to everything. Nice. Well, as usual, we have a template file, so go ahead, everyone, and just pop over to the template and follow along with us here. So we have a sample completely made up company called Cobra Kai. You're so creative, especially for an accountant. <laughs> I love the Karate Kid series. But Ben, when you look at this balance sheet for Cobra Kai, you know, what, what kind of comes to your mind as far as readability of it and how it's formatted? Mm, I, I don't love it necessarily. There's actually a bunch of things that pop out to me that we could definitely change here. But the first thing is that the the top it doesn't pop i just need a little bit more energy right away when i see that want some energy all right well we're gonna pop that energy up front by both bolding and italicizing cobra kai and then where it says balance sheet and then the year end as well so in order to do that what we could do is just we're on top of cobra kai right there we could hit a control b to bold if we want to unbold it we hit control b again but again we we bold it with a control b and then if you wanted to italicize it you could also uh, do that with the control feature or control i to italicize it all right what do you think of that ben is that popping a little bit more now that is way better let's do it with everything though not just the company name let's do it with balance sheet and 1231 right. so you're telling me go to balance sheet and now hit control b and control i as well uh let's do both of these at once how do you Ooh, feel about that wow a little efficiency you're talking yeah, about yeah again saving half seconds that'll be a theme <laughs> throughout our series here they add up so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down the shift because I'm only highlighting two cells at once here. So hold down shift, press my down arrow key. Now I've got these two cells that have highlighted together. Now when I hit control B and control I, they will, it'll happen at the same time. And, and you saw that that saved a little bit of time. That will become especially valuable when we're working with a lot of cells. Yeah, using shift and the arrow keys might be one of the most common things that I do in Excel, especially when it comes to formatting. And so it doesn't just have to be the down arrow key. You can go up, down, left, right, whatever you want. Just hold the shift key and the arrow keys and it'll hold fill shift, everything in for you. Hold shift, use the arrow keys, go whatever direction you want. Your employers are going to expect that you can fly around the keyboard. When we say fly around, it's using those keyboard to, uh, the keyboard to quickly navigate around. All right, well, we got that taken care of, Ben. Everything else good? We done? We are not even close <laughs> no. to done. No. I think a pretty pretty common thing, and I tend to like this one more than most people do, but adding commas to our spreadsheets. So right now you see 5,000, and that's a smaller number, so it's not. So we can tell it's 5,000. But if you look at total current assets, you see 15,500. Well, at first glance, I'm not able to just see that necessarily right away. And we have an even longer number. Is that millions, billions, thousands? I, well, you I know it's not know. thousands, but what is it? And so putting commas in just makes your files so much more readable. All right. So to put the commas in, um, we're going to, in, in a later series, we're going to show you some shortcuts behind this one, but a very simple way to do this. I'm just on cell B6 with my cash here. I'm going to go up to the home ribbon is what we refer to it as, and then just go ahead and click on the comma. And I've got $5,000 in. Does that make you happy now? It makes me happier. We're on the right uh, track here, but typically, well, always with balance sheets, you don't ever see decimals, right? You don't ever see cents. It's all rounded anyway. So what I want you to do is get rid of those decimals by navigating over to the right where you can see there's, you know, two zeros and an arrow key showing one, uh, one zero. And what that's doing is just getting rid of the decimal and you hit it twice. Now that makes me happy. Yep. And let's say you'd done that and you decided you wanted to put the decimal back in. Now, obviously we taught them last lesson. You could just control Z it a couple times because that is what you had just done. But let's say you, you know, I want four decimals after well, four spots yeah. after the decimal. Or you come up to a spreadsheet that the last thing you did wasn't eliminating the decimals, right? So you just want to increase it. How would you do that then? 
And then if you go to the one over to the left, so between where you are and the comma, and click that about five or six times. Five or six times. <laughs> yep. right. Then you can add in those decimals right you can there. Get as, as, as many as you want. As right? many so. as you want. But you know what's really going to make me happy, Buzz? What's that? If you highlight all of these, not doing that shift and arrow key, but with a shortcut to highlight all of the assets at once to add a comma and remove the decimals. Okay, so don't do this all at Okay, don't do it one by one. Don't go to short-term investments and just repeat this every single time, right? And now Ben is also telling me we learned up above shift arrow key. So you know, I, I want to do that. Why can't I do that? You, you know, know I just, look, you, boom, it's done. What's your problem? In this, it absolutely works. You can, yeah. but I know that later today you're going to be working on an Excel file with 100,000 uh, rows in it, and then clicking shift and down arrow 100,000 times isn't going to be super efficient. It'll build the strength in my pointer finger. You are going to have the strongest pointer <laughs> finger in the area. All right. Well, so we, we did that the first time. So what do you want me to do when I come to this one here? What would be a better way to do All this? All right. So you're going to do shift down, but also hold control at the same time. So control and shift together and then the down arrow key. Wow. And there you go. You highlight all of it. Yeah. And just, just for fun, I mean, we're going crazy here, right? Mm -hmm. Why don't you hold control shift and hit the down arrow key one more time? Control shift, down arrow key. Oh, oh, oh my. wow. We're up to row like 1 million now. I wish they had commas in the rows. It'd be helpful, yeah. wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, is that 100,000 or is it 1 million? It That's is 1 million 48,576. So what control in the arrow key does will take you to the very end of your selection. Yep. And so in this case, there wasn't anything else down below so it took us just to the very bottom of the spreadsheet and now as you can see Boz is taking us to the very right of the spreadsheet and so control and the arrow keys will take you to the end of your selection yep so control and I'd actually been holding down shift throughout all that as I was doing that so that's why I kept highlighting every direction I was going but uh, to navigate just through your data, just using that control key. I'm just holding down control and uh, just hitting all my different arrow keys there. So, all right, I will do control shift and then <laughs> I did it twice. Okay, I'll just do it once to get to the end of that data and then go ahead and hit comma and then decrease decimal twice. I tend to, on, on my keyboard, I, I tend to do the uh, end key and shift and then an arrow key if I want to highlight or end, and then an arrow key if I want to navigate. It works very similar to the control key. It just kind of is a, is a preference for whatever reason that's the one I use. But. Yeah, different keyboards are formatted differently. So on the keyboard Boz is using, the end key is actually part of the left arrow, and so you have to hit function, and it's just, yep. it's a little bit messier, so it's really just getting used to your yep. own computer. Absolutely. All right, so we can go right here. So do you want me just to do that on all these little individual sections here, or how would you want me to do this one? I mean, a lot uh, should, of options. Should we show them how to highlight the whole column at once? Why not, huh? All right, all right. let's do it. And we we're going to teach you. We're going to show them in a future session. But they'll have to come Ooh, back. Ooh, a little to tease one. again for next time. That's good. Yeah, yeah. Let's go the, the slower way this time, just using the mouse, move over and click on E. Sure. There you go. And look at that. Now the whole column is highlighted. Comma format, no decimals. What would happen if you went below our selection now? So let's just scroll down to maybe roll like 40 or something like that. Mm -hmm. so there you go. go. That's to, good right there. Yeah. So if I go down here and type a, a one, nothing happens, Ben. <laughs> what if you type in <laughs> 9,427? I knew where he was going with that one. Yeah, Look at that. The, the commas is. there. No yeah. decimals are there. Yep. Everything. It's yep. all formatted the way we want. That's yep. kind of nice to do sometimes. And I think one thing we'll, we'll just say, I mean, we just showed you how, and in a future session, we'll show you a shortcut for how to go ahead and highlight that, that whole column. But if you just want to do an all control Z out of that one, but sometimes you don't want to do the whole column because maybe there's something beneath that that you don't want to format it the same way, then I would just go on top of the data that I do want to format that way, control shift, down arrow key, and just keep clicking it until I get to the bottom of the data that I want to highlight. And I don't know about you, but frequently I go one past it to make sure I have everything. Oh, but, I do that all the time. Yeah. It just it makes me feel better to make sure but that I have like, it all. Oh, yeah, I've captured everything. So I've captured everything there. I'll go ahead and hit my uh, comma and then my decrease decimal twice. And I think we're good. Are we done? Well, let's just see. You know, your manager is a little rough sometimes, yeah. and he's going to definitely print this thing off. Mm -hmm. So if you were going to print it, what would it look like right now? Um, let's see. We'll go uh, control P for print. Um, it looks fine to me. I, I don't know. I, I, what, I can what is the amount of current liabilities? Can you see that? Yeah, totally. So it's not on the first sheet, right? But I just go on to the second sheet and 
Total current liabilities, um, I don't know, it's one of those amounts. I, mean, I think <laughs> oh. it's the 8,500. Yeah, I see you're pulling out the tape right now from your desk, so you can <laughs> go ahead, print these off, tape them together, and hand them in. All right. What? Let's just find a way to fit all that information on one page. How all about right. that? So, I, so I'm, uh, I've escaped, and I'll talk through it. So again, I will control P this here. All right, and there's two different ways to do it. How would you do it? And then I'll show a d different way that I do it. Yeah, so what I would do on this one, a couple different things. On the left where it says portrait orientation, mm -hmm. if you click that drop down, you can switch it to landscape orientation. Yep. And now it all fits on one page. So that would work, but you know, I prefer portraits. Let's just go change it back to portrait. Yep. All and right. then a different way to do it on the bottom where it says no scaling on the left there. Mm hmm. If you could click that drop down and move up to where it says fit all columns on one page. All right. Wow, and in this case, it fits. It automatically shrinks it just enough so that it, all the columns fit on one page with the margins that you set up. Yeah, looks, looks pretty at this point in time. Do you, uh, can you access grid lines easy from here or not quite as easily from this one? I like to print with grid lines. That's my own personal preference. Not so. quite as easily as far as I know, but I never really print with grid lines because it's not that important to me. So. <laughs> we just don't print a lot. But So I will go back to, and I'll just show how I would usually access uh, this one here. So if I come to a sheet that looks like this, again, I'm starting from here, hitting Control P for the print, uh, going to page setup. And then if I wanted to go landscape, I could. I don't have to. I can now go to, I usually just go to fit one page by um, one page wide by then one page tall. And then I will go to sheet and hit my grid lines. And I will go ahead then and hit OK. And now I have something that looks a little prettier. And if I'd, if I'd wanted to actually go landscape on that one, I just would have clicked landscape here going through the page setup. And now, we, you know, sometimes it is helpful to, to print off stuff and, and show it to your uh, teammates or your manager, and this is how you would then go ahead and do it. Wow, that's pretty good, Boz. We've covered a lot. I think we, we do have one final thing. It's just for visually appealing on the screen, the concept of borders, all right? So because sometimes mm. people just review it on the screen, so you kind of want to indicate where there would be a subtotal. So where would you put a subtotal in here? Well, we already have some subtotals, like total current assets as an yep. example, right? Mm -hmm. And so maybe I would go under other current assets. All right. I would do a single line border under that one. All right. So right here, because um, beneath the 500, that, uh, that total current assets is a subtotal. So I'm on this cell. I will then now go up to my home ribbon in the font section, and here's my borders area. It had defaulted for me to my bottom border. That's probably the last one we had used, but if you don't have that, hit the drop-down box, go ahead and click on that bottom border. Where else would you do that one? Just out of curiosity. I would probably do that one before total current liabilities as well. All right, so total current liabilities. I will go back, and now that I've done it once, I can just click that bottom border. All right, I'd probably do it, I'm gonna do it one more time if you're okay after other long-term liabilities. I agree with that, I think that's a good one. Do we not do it for total assets though, or would you like to do something a little so different? So if you scroll down just a little bit, you see that total assets does in fact equal total liabilities and shareholders equity. Yeah. So in that case, we're gonna use a special one. Ooh. Yeah, so if you click in the total assets cell, mm -hmm. the, we're going to want a single top line on that one to show that you're adding up a bunch of things above it. And then you're also going to want a double bottom border. Think of the double bottom as like an equal sign. Yeah. It's telling you that it equals another cell. So, yep, you got it right there, top and double bottom border. And if you click away, you can see... Look at that. There's a single top and double bottom border. And I'd put that over total liabilities and stock close equity as well. Right here, we'll do it again and again. It's already pre-selected. So I just go to that other kind of grand total and I can uh, do, the, do the same feature. And then probably beneath retained earnings, I should go and do my single border, my single bottom border there for shareholders equity. There um, you go. I think with any luck, that's what we wanted to cover today. I'll well, go we back. can double check, huh? <laughs> we bolded, we italicized, we did highlighting a variety of different ways. We used borders and we used the print preview function. Pretty cool, man. Yeah, I think so. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in to Lesson 2. We'll be back for Lesson 3, going to teach you some other core features that you got to know in Excel. Thanks, everyone. We'll talk to you next time.